Hello, so for our sixth exercise, we will use delay, which is an audio effect, to create kind of sensation of acoustics in a space. Um, so I'll use the sound of a bouncing ball to demonstrate that effect. So I found in free sound this sound of a ball. and I will download it. Um, so the one thing to notice is that I just want one sound of the ball and here we have one, two, three, four, five. So the first thing I will do is to actually um, cut, trim the audio. And to do so, I will use Audacity, which is a free software. You can, you can easily use it as well and I will load um, my audio file. I can just drag it. Um, and then I will expand a little bit the window so I can see better what, what I'm doing. And I will zoom in till I see just one, sorry, one sound wave. Uh, and then I select, so for example, I click and drag, I select to kind of encompass all the kind of part of the recording that or the audio file that I want and I want to trim it so if I position my cursor here in the end I want to trim it really to the start of the audio file so I will listen to it and that's it this is the only part I want so how do I uh, keep this and discard the rest. Well, there's a button called Trim Audio Outside Selection, and I just want the audio inside, so this is exactly what I want, Trim Audio Outside. So now I have only this part, and uh, I will uh, save this. So to save, I will export. If I save, I save it as an Audacity file, but actually I want to save it as a WAV file. So, which is the original version, I can export as MP3, as WAV. So Audacity is all very good for simple editing, such as trimming, or to export as MP3 if you have a WAV and you want to make it smaller, you can compress it to MP3. But I will keep the WAV format. And I'll just keep it as it is. I will save it. Okay. And I have my, my audio file here. Okay, Great. Uh, I will not save this because there's nothing complex here to be saved. It's just a trimming operation. I don't want I don't need to save the audacity file for that. So I've already exported. I created what I wanted, so I don't need to save it. Um, so well now Let's bring it to, to P5 and let's uh, play it back, okay? Um, so, as usual, I will um, upload the file. So I'll just drag it here. And as usual, what I'll do is rename just for the sake of obtaining the name. And then I'll go to back here to processing and I will rename this exercise and I will call it exercise six uh, delay map. We're gonna map the delay to the, let's say to the acoustics or to some gameplay element or something like that, but um, it's a map delay. So what, what I need is a, a sound object. So I'm going to say let my sound and then I will load with a preloader, I will load my sound file, right? So I will say my sound equals load sound and then um, uh, parentheses quote and then the whole sound file name, end quote, end parenthesis, semicolon. And uh, then I can say, for example, a mouse press, play that sound, right? So function mouse press um, 
my sound play. So let's just check that this is working. It's working fine, right? So when I click, I hear the sound of the ball. Now let's add some delay to it, okay? Let's add some delay to it. Um, so let's go to our P5 uh, sound reference. And you will see that one of the first things you see here is actually delay. And delay, you have different ways to create a delay. Um, either you, you use uh, connect like we used uh, with a filter, if, if you remember, with the bandpass filter. Either we use connect and disconnect or we use process. Uh, I like to use connect and disconnect because that's kind of coherent with, with the different effects that, that we are doing. And then... Um, we can set for a delay, so delay is like an echo, right? So we can set a delay time. So this is how often it occurs in time or, or how, um, and it's a, it's a echo time in seconds. Um, so if we set it to one, um, it will be very long. It will take quite long time to hear. If we set it to a smaller number, uh, it will be uh, it will it will it will be so 0 0.5 for example will be half a second right and the feedback is the amount of the original source that gets fed back into the delay so a delay allows you to have a delay not just of the original sound but of the echoes so the echoes produce echoes that's called feedback when the the, the, the original sound produces uh, echoes and then the echoes produce echoes, etc. And we can, with feedback, we can control each echo, how much percentage of the original sound's amplitude it has. So, for example, a feedback of 0 0.5 means that the, the echo will be half loud as the first sound. Uh, if you, the, uh, so, uh, uh, feedback is between 0 and 1. If you put feedback of 1, that means that the echo will be as loud as the, as the um, original sound, this creates something called feedback or it's infinite uh, feedback loop and you should avoid uh, that because then you'll have the, the echo sounding as loud as the original sound, sounding as loud as its echo, its echo, its echo, its echo, and it repeats and, and recurs and you don't want that recursiveness. So don't try to put between 0 and 0 0.9, something like that. Um, so let's create a delay for that. I need to create an object of the type, uh, just I'm going to call it my delay, for example. And in setup, uh, I can say that uh, my delay is a new P5 delay. Okay. Um, so we create the delay, and now we can attach the delay, for example, to. Um, to the sound and that would be uh, my we can disconnect the sound from the, the output and then we don't hear the original sound we just hear the echoes or we can leave it connected and just uh, connect on top of it connect the, the delay right. connect my delay um, so that should do the trick, but we won't hear much yet because we haven't defined uh, anything uh, for the delay. So we haven't defined any feedback time, any delay time. Uh, so we need we need to do that. Okay. Uh, so let's say that we set a feedback time. My delay. Um, we set a feedback percentage of let's say 0 0.5 right? and for in terms of the um, delay time we set uh, 0 0.5 seconds let's say 
Now let's try again. So now we start to hear the echoes, right? And if I put a smaller delay time, let's try this, this out. You see the echoes come quicker one after the other. Um, and if I want to have more feedback, so for example 0 0.8, then you get more, e more echoes because each, each echo <coughs> is more similar to the original sound. So you can play with these values. Um, I like long feedbacks and kind of medium size delay times. something interesting. Um, another interesting thing to play with is the, the filter frequency, right? So you can have my delay frequency, uh, sorry, my delay filter, and then you add here a frequency, uh, for example, I don't know, 200 hertz. So you hear that the filter, this is a, um, a low-pass, it's a low-pass filter, so now the, the echoes are deeper, they are, they are lower. If I put a filter of 2000, they're brighter, right? They're, they're higher. So um, we can play with any of these and map to, for example, the size of a room. It can be the room uh, of a game to give an idea of the space where, where you are. So for example, what if I map, uh, what, what if I draw a rectangle based on my Y position um, and then the smaller the rectangle, the less uh, delay you, you will hear. And the bigger the rectangle, let's imagine the rectangle is a room, the more delay you will hear. So let's draw a rectangle which will be, um, which will start on position zero zero and with the width of this of the window, right? Width, and then for the y, let's use mouse y. So this is just a graphical aspect. I'm not, uh, I'm not changing the um, the sound yet. Um, Actually, this would work nicely with a black background, actually. So, I'll just put a black background. There you go. Now, what if I map the filter to my Y position as well? It will create the illusion that I'm changing the size of a room and the size of the echo, or the characteristics of the echo. Um, so, let's map as a filter, let's map uh, mouse y, and we know that mouse y goes from zero to height. And the filter, we don't need something too drastic, something like 100 maybe, or even 200, and then 2000, which they, they, these are values we tried and we know that they, they work. Um, but actually, I have this in setup, it will not. Setup only calculates or is only calculated once. I need to move this. If I make it a function of the mouse and I want it to change over time, I need to put it in draw. So I'm going to cut this here and I'm going to paste it here in draw. Okay. So let's listen now to it. Uh, I think I have a typo here. Yes, there's a parenthesis missing. Sorry. Let's try it again. So here I have a low delay. And we know from the Doppler effect that uh, from the Doppler effect that this change in frequencies give us an idea that some object or something, some sound source, is tra traveling a certain distance. Whereas if the distance, if the frequency stays the same, it's as if the object doesn't move much. So that's when I one element to play with the Doppler effect, 
think I'm going to play the Doppler effect. Um, we, of course, we could map anything. Instead of mapping filter, um, we could map the, the delay time, right? To the mouse, but then instead of 0 to 2000, we could have 0 and 1. So here we have those are delays. Here we have longer delays, right? Almost every second. Or we could actually uh, use the feedback uh, instead of any of those. So not much feedback here. And a lot of feedback. So of all these mappings, I think I, pref I still prefer the filter. So I'm just going to put back here the filter. And it was 200 to 2000 hertz, right? Um, I'll just wrap this up by adding a little ball moving in the screen to create further create this illusion of physics and of bouncing. Um, because we have the son of a ball, but no ball <laughs> visible, right? So, I'll just create the illusion of a ball moving in space, and it, it will move in the top of my screen. So I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm going to create two variables to draw that. I'm going to create the position. Uh, so it's, it's only going to move in the x-axis. I'm going to have it static in the y-axis. So I'm going to create a variable called pause x for the position in the x-axis. And then I'm going to add the speed to which it will travel. I'm going to call this speed x. Okay? And in setup, I want to say that pause x is by default uh, in the middle of the screen. So width divided by 2. And then the speed x will be, let's say, 2 pixels. It will, every frame will move 2 pixels. Um, and I want to draw a ball. I want to add the speed to the position to animate the ball. And I want to draw the ball in the screen. So let's, let's draw it. So it will be a circle. And it will be pause x and y. I don't know. We can draw it in pixel um, 100. Sorry, this is a comma. 100. And uh, 50 pixels of diameter. And, okay, so let, let's see it moving. Uh, ah, I, it's not moving yet because I'm not adding the speed x to pause x. So I need, before I draw it, I need to say pause x plus equal. This means add to itself speed x. So the circle is moving, it's not bouncing back. Also, it's a bit boring that the circle is the same color as the square. So I will, um, when I draw a circle, I'm going to say that I want to draw a red circle, okay? Um, so now we should have a red circle, but also the rectangle got red. Why? Because as soon as I set a color, anything that gets uh, drawn next, even if it's in the next frame, gets the same color. So I also need to set the color to be white before I draw the rectangle. And now I have a red circle and a white rectangle. Now I want the ball to bounce back when it arrives to the end of the of of the screen to bounce back. So what I want to say is the following. If, let me save a little bit of time of space in my screen by optimizing the space here, put in the functions, here we go. So if, pause x, if the ball is going through the right, meaning that pause x is bigger than the width of the window, then make that, um, 
make that uh, uh, position um, the inverse. Uh, well, not the position, but the speed. So instead of, say, we're moving two pixels to the right, start moving two pixels to the left. So I multiply the speed by uh, minus one. Uh, so I, I can say speed equals itself, uh, uh, the times itself and minus one. And uh, it will bounce back. Let's, let's take a look. Yeah, it bounced back. But now it disappears on the left. We want it also to bounce back there. So because the speed is plus two, it makes it go two pixels to the right until it reaches the right edge and then it goes to minus and it goes two pixels to the left. But it not, it's not going right again. So we say if pause x is larger than width or, and we have the symbol pipe, which is two vertical lines, you need to check in your keyboard where it is, depending on the countries, this will be in a different position on the screen, but it's pipe, pipe, symbol. Uh, in my keyboard is next to the enter key uh, in the same as the slash, in the same key as the slash. Um, so this is the British, British keyboard. Or pause x is going through the left, mean, meaning that it's lower than zero, then invert the speed. And now we have the ball bouncing on the right and we should have the ball bouncing on the left you see i don't I, I half of the ball is going out and half of the ball means the radius of the ball so if in a di diameter that is 50 um the radius is 25 right half of the diameter so i don't want it to reach width i want it to go just to width width minus radius so minus 25 and I don't want it to go 0, I want to go 0 plus the radius, so 0 plus 25, which is 25. And let's make it go a little bit faster so that we can check all this without waiting so long. So let's see how it's going. Here we go. Going, 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 going. And I can press the mouse. To... But instead of pressing the mouse to making this noise, I want the noise to be made by the circle when it hits the wall, right? When does it hit the wall? Precisely inside this um, if clause. So I can move the mouse uh, or I can copy this code. I will comment it out and I'm going to copy it and add it here. So what this makes it go like this. So to create an illusion that the ball is in a room, I could constrain the rectangle to the base line of the circle, which is 100 plus the radius, 125, right? So there's a very useful function in pros in P5 called constrain, and I would constrain the height um, Sorry, I, that, that, that's not the code I should be changing. Is this? Uh, it's the the rectangle height should be mouse not mouse y but constrain. Uh, so it should be mouse y and uh, let's say 125, right? So mouse y should be between 125 and in the, in the minimum and height in the maximum. So constraint, the first parameter is a bit like map. The first parameter is the variable we're constraining. And I have to close the rectangle here. The first variable is the, let me stop this. Uh, the first variable is the variable you're constraining. And the second variable is the minimum. So I want the minimum size of the rectangle to be 125 to cover the baseline of the ball, and then the maximum is the height. Let's play it. Uh, sorry, I have a typo here. 
con no, it's not contrained, that it's constrained. Sorry about that, there was an S missing. So now it's constrained. I guess we could have even lower frequency here for the minimum frequency. Let's try it out with this value. And here we go. We could even also constrain the filter. Um, we could have the same constraint for uh, the, the filter to be sure that they both map. But I don't think it's strictly necessary, but if you so wish that there would be an exact mapping between the rectangle and the frequency, we would need to add that constraint here. So I just copied it here and then establish the new minimum to be 125 for the Y. Maybe I just put it a bit more clearly like this. So now moving the mouse in the white area does not affect the, the frequency. And that's it. I hope uh, this gave you uh, some interesting ideas how to play with delay to create the illusion of acoustics and uh, playing with sound effects with P5.